Welcome, my friends, to lesson 19 of a friendly introduction to abstract algebra. In this video, we continue talking about the very, very important notion of a normal subgroup. We start by considering the most basic non-commutative example, namely the symmetric group on three elements. And we take sigma to be the three cycle one, two, three. So sigma moves one to two, two to three, and three to one. So clearly sigma is of order three and the subgroup generated by sigma consists of sigma itself, sigma squared and sigma to the third power, which is the identity. This is a subgroup of S3 of order three, which is called the alternating group, a name that is not clear yet. It will become clear when we talk about the signum of a permutation later on. But here in this example, we will show that this A3 is indeed a normal subgroup of the symmetric group S3, meaning by definition of a subgroup that it is invariant under conjugation with any element of S3. So if I take pi to be any permutation in S3, I must show that pi A3 pi inverse is the same as A3. So there are two cases. If pi is an element of A3, this is of course trivial because A3 is a subgroup. So taking this product here, pi, any element of A3 and pi inverse, which again must be an element of A3, is clearly an element of A3. So this shows that this here is true, that this is contained in A3, but we showed in the video of the last lesson that this is already enough to have equality here. This was this lemma here. Or alternatively, a long time ago when we started talking about cosets, we proved that if I take an element of a subgroup, then the left coset is just the subgroup itself and it's the same as the right coset. And from this here follows this as well. All right, so let's consider a permutation that is not an element of A3. Now this here is a three cycle this is the other three cycle, one, three, two, and of course I can take the identity. So for example, I take this transposition here, one, two, which simply switches one and two. And then I indeed do the calculation, tau sigma tau inverse is tau, then here is sigma tau inverse. And then also a long time ago when we talked about Sn, the symmetric group, we proved that conjugating by a permutation is the same as this here. I take the same cycle structure, in this case a three cycle, and then instead of one, I write tau of one, instead of two, I write tau of two, and instead of three, I write tau of three, and this clearly gives me two, one, three, which by cyclic permutation can be seen to be the same as 1, 3, 2, which is sigma squared. So this here is an element of A3. And the same holds if I conjugate sigma squared with tau. So tau sigma squared tau inverse, you can read this for yourself, it gives me sigma, which is an element of A3. And of course, if I conjugate the identity, I end up with the identity. This again proves that this here holds for this pi. And again, by our lemma, this is enough to prove that I have equality here. And the same can be done, of course, for the other two cycles or the permutations one or transpositions one, three and two, three. So by elementary calculation, I see that A3 is indeed a normal subgroup of S3. Okay, now what is the index of A3 and S3? By Lagrange's theorem, 
this is this quotient, which of course is two. This here is six divided by three. So the index here is two, which means that there are only two different cosets, namely the subgroup A3 itself and the left coset tau A3 with this tau, or we could have taken this one or this one here, it doesn't matter. It always yields the same non-identical coset. So what is the quotient group? The quotient group as a set is simply the factor set S3 modulo A3, which consists exactly of these two different cosets. And now we proved in the last video that if this here is a normal subgroup, which it is, then this here can be given the structure of a group. Now there's only one group of order two, namely z sub two, the integers mod two. And here an explicit isomorphism would be, I map this element to zero bar, the residue class of zero mod two, and this element to one bar. And then you can easily check that this is indeed an isomorphism. And just to get used to working with the operation in the quotient group, we check by hand that this here, which I call G, is indeed the, the one element of order two. This here is the identity of this factor group, the left coset of the identity with respect to A3. So this here must be the one element of this group, which is of order two. Clearly it is not of order one because it is not the same as this here. Those are different cosets. So we have G is not equal to the identity of this quotient group, which would be again, this left coset A3 itself. And then we have to check that G squared is indeed the identity. So G squared is G times G, which by definition is this here. And now comes the definition of composition in our quotient group. Which is given by this here. I simply take two representatives of this coset. Of course, I choose tau and tau itself. So, and then I compose these and take the left coset of this composition. But this here, tau squared, clearly is the identity because tau is a transpos transposition. So I end up with the identity of S3 multiplied with A3. So the left coset of the identity of A. So this coset here is the same as the coset of the identity with respect to A3, which is simply A3 itself, showing that G squared is the identity of my quotient group. Because again, the left coset A3 is the identity of the quotient group. Okay, now let's put all these facts together in one definition. We say that for a normal subgroup, n of g, the quotient set together with this operation here, gn times hn is defined as gh and then left coset um, with respect to n. That this here is a group, we proved that in the last video and it is called the quotient group g mod n and the map that sends any element to its left coset, so it goes from G to this quotient group, is called the canonical projection from G to G mod N. Okay, and in the next video, we are going to take a closer look at this canonical projection and continue discussing normal subgroups and quotient groups. My experience is that shorter videos are better received. So we'll end this video here and I'll be seeing you in the next one, hopefully. Thanks for watching and bye bye.